Lesson 12 for June 15 to 21. What have they seen in your house? Read today by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, June 16. Learning from a king's mistake. Question. Read the account of Hezekiah's healing and the visit of the Babylonian ambassadors. Second Chronicles 32, verse 25. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favour shown him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. And verse 31. However, regarding the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, whom they sent to him to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land, God withdrew from him in order to test him, that he might know all that was in his heart. And Isaiah chapter 38. In those days Hezekiah was sick and near death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, Surely I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow of the sundial, which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees on the dial, by which it had gone down. This is the writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered from his illness. I said, In the prime of my life I shall go to the gates of Sheol. I am deprived of the remainder of my years, I said. I shall not see Yah, the Lord in the land of the living. I shall observe man no more among the inhabitants of the world. My lifespan is gone, taken from me like a shepherd's tent. I have cut off my life like a weaver. He cuts me off from the loom. From day until night you make an end of me. I have considered until morning like a lion. So he breaks all my bones. From day until night you make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow, so I chattered. I mourned like a dove. My eyes fail from looking upward. O oh Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He has both spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I shall walk carefully all my years in the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. So you will restore me and make me live. Indeed, it was for my own peace that I have great bitterness. But you have lovingly delivered my soul from the pit of corruption. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your truth. The living, the living man, he shall praise you as I do this day. The Father shall make known your truth to the children. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore we will sing the songs with stringed instruments all the days of our life in the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and apply it as a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. And Hezekiah had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? And then we read chapter 39 and watch the difference. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and re had recovered. And Hezekiah was pleased with him and showed them the house of his treasures, the silver and gold, the spices and precious ointment, and all his armory, all that was found among his treasures. 
there was nothing in his house or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? So Hezekiah said, They came to me from a far country, from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and what your fathers have accumulated until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And they shall take away some of your sons who will descend from you, whom you will beget, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. So Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which you have spoken is good, for he said, At least there will be peace and truth in my days. Scripture points out that the messengers were interested in the miraculous recovery of King Hezekiah. However, Hezekiah seems to have been more silent about his healing experience. He didn't emphasize the things that would have opened the hearts of these inquiring ambassadors to the knowledge of the true God. The contrast between his gratitude for being healed in chapter 38 and his silence about it in chapter 39 is striking. God left him to test him. This state visit was a most significant occasion, yet there's no record of Hezekiah seeking special guidance about it in prayer from prophets or from priests, nor did God intervene. Alone, out of the public eye, with no consultation with spiritual advisers, Hezekiah apparently let the word of God in his life and in the life of his nation recede from his mind. The intent of the historian in Second Chronicles 32.31 may have been to show how easily God's blessing can be taken for granted and how prone the recipients of his mercy are to become self-sufficient. Question below are some lessons about faithfulness in home life that can be gleaned from the experience of Hezekiah. What others can you think of? Every visit to the homes of Christians is an opportunity for people to meet followers of Christ. Few visitors are likely to open conversation about spiritual things. Christians must find ways that are sensitive and appropriate to the occasion to share the good news. Christians are not called to show off their material prosperity or accomplishments, though they may recognize these as blessings from God. They are called to, as it says in 1 Peter 2.9, declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, or to use Hezekiah's experience as a symbol to declare that they were dying, but Christ has healed them. They were dead in sin, and Christ resurrected them and seated them in heavenly places, as we read in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And so, to finish today, in what ways are you able to use your home to witness to others? How could you share your faith in Christ more forthrightly with visitors to your home? You have been listening to a reading of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. This service is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department and Christian Services for the Blind. Remember, God is always faithful.